super bummed. It was so much fun. It was such a cool experience. It was, were you just like stalked? I mean, I could imagine, I mean, it was crazy. There were so many people. No, like it was just wild to like have so much energy in one area and have everyone, it was like a festival of love. Like everyone loves Bravo, we, everyone loved it. It wasn't like people were there fighting or doing anything. It was like all just celebration of like all the love we have for all the people on the shows. I thought it was just such a cool experience. Have you ever had like a crazy fan story? You know, like speaking of fans, like good or bad, just like, you know, these Bravo fans are very intense. They love Bravo. Yeah. Um, crazy fan stories. I've had some pretty crazy messages telling me like to like go and kill myself and things like that in very detailed ways. But that's the only thing crazy I would say I've ever gotten. I've definitely gotten long messages of people telling me like some of their personal stories and sometimes like they overshare and that's okay because they feel like they know us and I'm not someone who would ever, you know, mess with anyone's privacy or anything like that. But I think that sometimes it's, it's wild to see how much of an impact we have on viewers and um, it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I don't know, nothing too crazy. And you never even get like when someone is sending, because that seems to be the new thing. I know this just happened with Erica herself. Like when you get these like DMs of people saying like, go kill yourself and whatever you said, like all these ways that never, I mean, that's gotta not be easy. Well, no, it's not easy. It's scary. And it makes you feel like someone lurking like out there. Cause like who would take the time to send a message like that? It's kind of freaky. Um, you just kind of do what you can to protect yourself, like, and stay away from people online that say things like that. Never respond. Is there a particular Bravo show, like, if you could go and be on another show, you know, you were going to leave sudden? Hills. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. You didn't hesitate in saying that. No. Who is your favorite on that show now? Honestly, Dorit because of her style. I think she's fascinating. Her accent is fascinating. Everything about her, she never under, under delivers. I mean, I'm just all about her this year. I've been obsessed with Dorit for like her style is like, I don't even understand how yeah. it is. It's yeah. literally insane. It's yeah. crazy. She's a fascinating person. I love watching the show. Have you ever had like a bad Bravo Levery experience where like, you know, you met someone and they just like had an attitude, like one of the housewives or something like that? No, I haven't actually. Everyone has been really, really cool. Um, no bad housewives. <laughs> what about, you know, like you mentioned Erica, at, like BravoCon, like what about like everything she's going through now? Like it's kind of a lot. It's a lot going on and it's unfortunate because like I know the restraints of filming what can and can't be said what people have to say and like don't have to say and I just think it's a super difficult situation anything legal to navigate on a reality show in my experience like it's really difficult to be navigating anything legal both in your life and then on a show on top of that did so. you, did you ever to that point, like think of, you know, like when there are legal things or whatever, or just, it's a hard, you know, like you, you are honest, you put it all out there. Yeah. Do you ever feel like, do you ever think of quitting the show? Like throughout the seven years, like I, this is not worth it. Or did like, does that ever cross your mind? It's a, it always crosses my mind, like pros and cons of doing it another year, but I feel so invested in the show. I feel so connected to the show because like, I was, you know, like we were saying, 21 when it began, the show was beginning. I gave birth to my daughter. I gave birth to my son. I just feel super involved with it. So I've never necessarily just been like, F this show, blah, blah, blah. I just, yeah, no, I, I feel like super close with it. I think I've had my times where I'm like, I'll walk away, but I'm, I was never serious. You were never you know? serious. No. What do you think are like the biggest misconceptions of Catherine Dennis? Oh, good question. I, I'm sure there's so many out there because I've not always been the best at like verbalizing how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking and all those things. I'm still learning about all that. But um, maybe, maybe one of the 
biggest misconceptions is that I, I don't want to learn. I don't want to have those conversations because I do. Um, sometimes I just don't know, always know how to advocate for myself or for how I feel, you know? Um, yeah. Has Caleb helped with that? Just kind of like expressing yourself and like advocating for yourself? Yeah, sometimes it's because he is not <laughs> giving me like, like, let's say we're, um, we're having an argument or something and, or just a disagreement. And I'm trying to express myself in different ways to trying to get him to understand. I realize sometimes the easiest way for him to understand what I'm saying is to simplify it and just be like, listen, you hurt my feelings. And then he's like, oh, okay, I get it now, rather than trying to give all these explanations. So yeah, I think it's just really getting down to the core of what really hurt you. That makes a lot of sense. And as we wrap up, if you were to look back at season one, 21 year old Catherine, what advice would you give yourself like today, looking back at yourself? Oh, that's tough. Um, in a way I want to say stay single, but I have my children, so I would never change that. But I would say people aren't always going, the world doesn't always favor you just because you're a good person. Like sometimes be, being a good person doesn't mean you will always win the battle, but it does mean you will win the war. So keep going. That is great advice. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to discuss or bring up or leave us with? I like to give people a chance at the end before we say goodbye. Thank you for answering all my questions. No, absolutely. It's so good to like be back on a podcast. I haven't done one in so long. And with, you know, the season, um, season eight coming up, I'm like just getting excited, not really knowing what to expect. We have a lot of new cast members, I think this year. So there'll be a shakeup in a lot. And um, yeah, so I'm just excited to share this part of my life with everyone. I think I've grown so much, you know, the last decade basically um and I think I have a lot that I've self-reflected on in the last year that I want to give back and provide value to people so I am just excited to be able to like bring something positive to reality tv I so, love it and you seem very happy and yeah you seem like a calm relaxed Catherine so calm relaxed Catherine we'll see if it stays that way calm the kitty <laughs> I love you anyway, Catherine, calm or not calm, <laughs> but you know, where can everyone find you online who wants to follow you, who doesn't already, which I'm sure is everyone. Okay. Um, so I'm at Catherine Dennis, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N on um, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, and TikTok. I have a TikTok that I'm still trying to learn. <laughs> TikTok is not. I mean, am I really 30 and old? Because TikTok is like, I'm like, y'all do a lot for that TikTok, but I'm sure everyone thought that about Instagram. Y'all do a lot for Instagram. I do your talk. I do not understand TikTok. I I like it's a beast that I have to conquer myself. I'm like, yeah. this is a lot of work. <laughs> minute. <laughs> it's gonna take a minute. But um, I am on there. I'm learning to post. So follow me and yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate you taking your time. Keep in touch. Thanks for having me.